a lot of you guys have been asking if I'm going to upload the full podcast episodes to YouTube, and the answer is yes. New episodes will continue to premiere weekly on Storyfire, then they will arrive here a week later. There have been four episodes so far with some great guests that I'll be uploading over the next couple weeks until I catch up, and then it will be weekly on a one-week delay behind the Storyfire premieres. Audio versions available, of course, on Spotify and Apple Music. Listen, I hope you guys enjoy the following first episode featuring my colleague, and wife. I'm truly grateful for your support, and I hope that through having real conversations with good people and people I enjoy, you may be able to extract some value out of that as well. I appreciate you. Welcome to the first episode of Decently Indecent. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say is thank you so much for tuning in. Whether you are watching or listening, you're probably here because you are familiar with some of the content I've made throughout the years um, online, on YouTube and Twitter, and Maybe you enjoyed it enough to stick around, and it is an absolute privilege to be in a position where even one person being interested in what I have to say um, is pretty incredible. So I can't stress enough how grateful I am for the opportunities you guys watching and listen have watching and listening have given me the past several years. You'll have to excuse me. I'm new to podcasts. The first time I've really done any sort of long form. When I'm not, you know, I'm planning on not editing it afterwards. So it's a different vibe. It's a different feel. Uh, I'm really excited, honestly, to be working on this show and trying to build it into something meaningful uh, over the course of months and years. Uh, obviously, these things don't just happen overnight. But having on interesting guests, you know, having honest conversations with some of the incredible people I've met throughout the years via YouTube and other online things and my travels to Texas and other places around the world. Uh, and ultimately trying to explore what it means and what it takes to live a decent life uh, and have a little bit of fun while you're doing it. So there's probably nobody who has made my life more decent than my beautiful wife and colleague, Christina, better known online as Mrs. Lush. Oh, big name reveal, sweetheart. Wow. Yeah. Nobody could have figured that out if it weren't for you. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> so I, I lobbied some questions to our YouTube audience yesterday to see if I could uh, use some, some audience questions as some ancillary content for this podcast. And one of the ones was what's Mrs. Lush's real name. Ah. And one of the replies was they don't use the real names cause they want people to know it, but literally just look it up on Google. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, yeah. It's I'm not, not even sure that it's because we don't want people to know it because we know it's out there is what it is. I mean, you can do your best, like, but to really remain fully anonymous online, it, it takes a, 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 a gigantic effort. And we just, you know, we have the, the pseudonyms, I've had mine for years, uh, but I mean, there's still there's still videos on my main channel that were, you know, that are up there that have my, my name on them back in my music days. Mm -hmm. um, so, so this is, I gotta say, before you get into digging me with questions here, mm. this is my first time ever doing a podcast. I was just Come gonna on. lead in with that. Oh, I, sorry. I, 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 I thought you were gonna start asking me Listen, questions. I'm, I'm working from <laughs> notes here. Let me do my thing. You know what? You're prepared. I'm not. Here we yeah. go. I, I prepared is a little bit of an aggressive term for what I, for how I handle myself on the internet. <laughs> uh, I would say I've scrapped together enough to try and get us through, but you know what? I've been doing that for six or seven years and it hasn't failed me yet. So uh, I did want to say, I appreciate you being here. Obviously, um, you know, on my, my plan over uh, the course of the future of the show is to have on people that I like and I find interesting and I, you know, hopefully I can learn from them. And uh, I thought you would be the perfect first guest just because you know a lot of people that watch me on the main channel know who you are and obviously we have a, a whole different audience and there's some crossover on the second channel we do on youtube where people have been watching us for years but i'm not in that format though you are you know you know that it's going to be edited you can do multiple takes yeah. it's like you know there's so many times where we like start saying a sentence and we're like oh, oh sorry fuck i fucked that up uh, let's do it again oh oh shit oh fuck i fucked that and the beauty of this dynamic is it's just, you know, as much as we're being ourselves on Lush Life and we're kind of having the banter between each other, this is just completely like, this is how it is. You know what I'm saying? We mess up, stays in, and we just keep ripping it. So uh, it is your first podcast ever. I've been on plenty. So, you know, it's not like I'm, I'm an inexperienced um fish in this regard. But uh, yeah, what are, you, what are you feeling right now? Were you nervous coming to this? Did you even... Do you even care at all? or I care. Oh, <laughs> come on. I care. I'm putting myself out there. So it would be wow. silly not to care at all. Yeah. Um, also, it is the first episode. So there's a little pressure there. Um, <laughs> I will say being on Lush Life for the last however many years has definitely prepared me for it. Yes. Because I was super nervous at first going into that. I bet. 
Um, and it took a long time to really get comfortable with it. So even though this format is totally different, I do feel better because of Lush Life. So, and plus, I'm just in here talking to you. That's it. You're That's my what I told you, hun. We're literally just in the living room right now. There's not 37 listen- lights and 10 cameras around. Just pretend like, no, this is totally natural. So sometimes I do, I don't want to say forget, but I kind of pretend in my head sometimes like people aren't watching and listening. So then when... If I ever do once in a while read comments or someone sees me in public and says something, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm 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 out there. Yeah. Yeah, you are. I did want to start this episode with uh, just a little pour, a little celebratory, a little celebratory pour. I got for those of you listening and not watching, we have uh, a couple of carafes, decanters in the middle uh, of the table. So we're just going to pour a little bit of this this whiskey. I know my wife is. I'm going to force her to have a sip just as a celebratory, you know, first sip to kind of launch this show. I will be actually be drinking a drink, but honey, you don't have to drink the whole thing. She's not much of a day drinker and it is about noontime right now. So I'm not much of a day drinker or much of a drinker. I'll drink from time to time. That's perfect. There you go, sweetheart. But let's not forget, speaking of, you know, how I used to be really nervous to do Lush Life. Yeah. I, we used to drink to record. Yep. We did. You got to get better too at moving the mic around with you when you're moving, and I'm the I'm same afraid way. I'm gonna pop that thing out of the socket. <laughs> you, she, we were setting up. She like somehow lifted the boom arm from the microphone out of the socket, and it, I don't know how that's even possible. But just don't lift up. Just I don't even right. know my own strength. I'm so uh, strong. True. Come so, on, man. Here you go, darling. So to decently and decent, Slancha, thanks to Storyfire for obviously helping me get this show together, and I'm excited for the future. Who knows what this could bring? Um, but I can't wait to explore this journey of new, unfiltered, unedited exploration of life. Cheers. Oh, God, that's good. Honestly, that's break. delicious. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I always forget you secretly are kind of a huge bourbon fan. I like the taste of alcohol. Yes. I don't love the after effects sometimes. <laughs> you like the taste? The feeling can be nice, but uh, when you get to our it's age... short-lived. The feeling the day after, uh, it starts to become negative ROI Yeah. when it comes to, you know, is it worth having two hours of fun hee-hee feeling to just be a to bag of dicks? To tossing and turning for six hours in bed and then feeling like crap the next bag day? Bag of dicks the next day. Bag well, of dicks. <laughs> something you gotta, yeah. Those are those are, the, those are the conversations you have to have. As you get older, it becomes yeah. less and less ROI a lot of times, especially when you're used to getting up early like you are and have a set regimen. Mm. I want to start here. I want to I want to take it back for a second to take me back to 2019. How the hell did you let me convince you to sit down on camera with me and start, you know, reacting to videos on the internet? And, you know, I was actually obviously doing some vlogs on that second channel previous right. to that where you were in, you were involved in the sense that I was like, "Hey honey, I'm bringing a camera along and we're going to vlog some stuff." And you're like, "Oh fuck, oh well, great. Here we go. Whatever." But you were a good sport. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> you were a good I sport. I definitely had never enjoyed the idea of vlogging, no, as you it, know. And, and I think I'm, it wasn't for you either. And, I mean, if we're being honest, if you look at the content, I haven't and really don't either. And over the years, I've I've developed even more of a resolve with this idea that, you know, bl- vlogging and, and trying to capture every moment in your life and turning it into content is, in my opinion, one of the most... It, toxic things it can be one of the most toxic things you can do just for life and relationship the only flip side to that is you know looking back now i love when i go you know digging through the lust life channel and see some of the old vlogs where you're pregnant in home depot and like when we're in the hospital right after jackson gave birth so i love having it is kind of this you know new age photo album where you're now taking videos and you get to look back and see and appreciate those times but When you turn it into a business and the whole business Mm -hmm. relies on those moments in your life being marketed and sold as content to people, I think that can really skew the relationship between just living and enjoying being present in the moment and raising a family when it's incentivized by money and you're incentivized to sensationalize everything because you're trying to get extra views. And that, that was a stance I had very early on that was pretty firm. So I... I was fortunate and I knew that any any of the content I was doing online, I wanted that to be able to be done like in an office with a camera, with it's just me where like I'm not relying on my son or whatever to be in a good mood to make content that day. Now, that said, I did ask, I did kind of pull you in 2019 was like, hey, what do you think about sitting down and doing some some reaction stuff with me? And what was your thought process early on? Like, 
I was coerced a little bit. <laughs> well, I only coerced. I don't know, that's, a, that's a strong word, coerced. So, listen, the way you talked me into it, you made it sound just so what did I say? I chill and so <laughs> lax. Like, it's no big deal. It is. You made it sound like, okay, we're just going to chill out. You can just, you know, stay in your comfy clothes. It was an after work thing. I was working full time. So, it would be, you know, later in the evening, after work, after dinner, after the kid was in bed. I'm yeah. ready to go to sleep. And you're like, it's okay. We'll just chill out. We'll have a drink, and we'll just, you know, shoot the sit. Oh, man, here I go. There she goes. Sorry, hon. No edits. It's fine. I'll do it. Keep it rolling. Shoot the shit and talk to the camera <laughs> and react to Wait, stuff. Wait, you can't swear. No, I'm just kidding, right? <laughs> that look in Baloney. your face. You're like, yeah, sorry. You the, can't, this ain't for me. You I'm can't, out. <laughs> you can't have me on. <laughs> uh, so I was like, all right, I'll just go for it. Like, you know, you definitely had to talk me into it. I wasn't like this readily willing participant ready to go with this desire to be on camera um so i gave it a try and we did have a little bit of fun with it i will say yeah um it was like an after work decompression espresso martinis set up take us like you a lot know, of laughing and at that time we were only recording one video at a time imagine I that know, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's crazy. oh my gosh which is a lot different it's than really how we do morphed. it now yeah it's morphed quite a bit over the years um, so, you know, I've really not had this desire to be the one to put myself out there to make content, but yep. I've kind of just, you know, been going with the flow for years now. And it's been great in the sense that it's allowed me to leave my day job as a nurse. Mm -hmm. um, I've got some questions about that coming up for you, too. Oh, okay, cool. I'm happy to answer that. Um, and, you know, it helps provide for the family i guess so yeah, this is my you're, you're a part way of, the of you're a part of the business working and it's not torture <laughs> it's fun no it's there's there's so many pros obviously i i was curious i think one of the reasons early on that you know lush life started to build an audience and obviously initially it was like bringing people over from the main channel which was in 2019 just pretty soon after i had had my initial surge uh where i was able to go full time late 2018 and I was like, well, you know, I think we have a, we could have a cool dynamic. Obviously what I do on the main channel will stay. I'll continue doing that type of video, but I thought it would make sense just to get you involved because you were averse to it and not in the way that like, like I was forcing your hand, but you, no. you contrary to the way a lot of people behave and act and what their desires are these days, you had zero interest in trying to get likes or views and make, get attention for yourself. Like it, I might be a little bit, um, what would you say, prejudiced in the way I look at it. it to me, I'm spending so much time online. Uh, I would say not prejudiced, partial to, mm. to see it from the view, like everyone I see online, like it's, it's a, it's a battle for attention. Right. And I'm yeah. always watching videos and there's always people posting shit, stupid shit, whatever they can do to get attention and likes and views. And there's a whole range of things people are, you know, in lengths people are willing to go to, in order to try to get those. And you were the opposite of that. You were like, yes. you, you were yes. not enamored, but just curious about what I was doing and how I was able to do it. But you didn't watch my video. Like you didn't really care that much. You, what you spent your time doing on, online was so different than the world I lived in online. And still is. And still, and still is. And that was, uh, yeah. and that's, and that's, and I think that's one of the things that adds to the dynamic of just us sitting down and talking and looking at content together there's always so many things that seem so like second nature and household names to me that you're being introduced to for the first time. And I think that's something the audience appreciates because it's relatable for couples who are maybe are in similar situations where it's like, oh, you know, maybe that's the woman who is trying to build a little brand and her mm. husband has zero interest in the internet and knows nothing about it, but she forces him to watch a few videos from time to time. So and yeah, I mean, it is, you mentioned it's a battle for views and likes and attention <sighs> online and Let's just say I would not have put myself in that battle arena if it weren't for you. Um, I have no regrets about where we've landed and, right. you know, how far this has come. Um, but I would not have put myself in that situation sure. if it weren't for you. Now, on that same note, I'm curious, what were some of your biggest aversions to doing it, going into it? If you had to, you know, you can be as specific or general as you want. Obviously, everyone has insecurities. I, I was, still do yeah, to this day. Yes. Obviously, you do. But was was it... What what was your biggest aversion? Was it kind of this this fear that just that kind of nothing specific, but that general fear of being on camera or yeah. having people see you having to do whatever, perform or do anything on camera that's unnatural, right? Was that? Yeah, just a general 
fear of putting myself out there, being on camera. Yeah. I mean, I have told you and the audience from day one that I'm not acting. You're not going to get an insincere reaction out of me. I'm not going to fake <laughs> it for anybody. I've tried. Yeah, you, you refuse. <laughs> um. So just this thought that like a lot of stuff online, you know, feels so fakey and forced and uh, and I'm not trying to go down that rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. Or and then, yeah, insecurities about my appearance and at the time. My weight, sure. and without getting all into that right now, I, I didn't feel comfortable, and I also just didn't feel interesting because, to this day, we are just very normal people, parenting and living a normal married life. I mean, nothing is particularly special about us. Hundred percent, I think. So that's probably the biggest thing is feeling like, why would I put myself out there if there's nothing special about me? Or what? Well, yeah, why? It's it's almost, you know. It feels almost delusional to think that, you know, people should care about what you're doing or what you're thinking or have to say, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, that that was something I battled with a long time early on. And I think you compensate for that by being a little bit grandiose or just even if you look at my older videos, the way I'm handling myself and things I'm saying and the editing techniques, they were all very flashy and, you know, built in a way to kind of disguise this fact that, I'm just kind of like this normal pleb sitting in his office talking about shit online. Like, why the fuck do people care about what I have to say or want to watch me? There is an element of humor, obviously, when I do. That was the main thing for me always was trying to deliver an experience that resulted in something humorous. I avoid topics that are too somber. I talk about things that I don't like and I criticize them, but I'm always trying to inject an element of fun into it. There is that feeling. And I know, I know, I think everyone deals with that, that are anyone that's in... Uh, a place where they're putting themselves out there. It's mm. like you deal with this. You have to wrestle with this idea that why why should people give a shit? Normal people, I should say. Yeah, the, but it, I was gonna say it doesn't look that way. So say no. you see these Instagram influencers, they look like they think they're the most special person Delusional on the planet. Delusional confidence is the best character <laughs> trait you can have if you're I trying like to term. be if you're trying to be a social media starlet influencer or whatever you want to say, the word influencer still makes me cringe when I say I it. I know that's kind of the de facto, but delusional confidence, ignorance, all of these things are are some of the best character traits you can have if you're trying to build a brand because all it really takes is to be so certain of something and to just spend years making content and not shutting the fuck up about that one thing, eventually there's going to be people that find you and agree with you and you might build a little bit of following. There's a million different ways to go about that. But yeah, when you are somebody that is a little bit self-conscious or you aren't delusional and you realize like, what is so interesting about my life? Maybe there it's not. So it, it's hard to put yourself out there. But then I think looking back, that's part of what people like about us, I understand that about now. us in particular is they can come watch us sit down in front of a computer, laugh about a couple of videos. We're not trying to force anything. It's just like if we had to do that with the camera off, we were just like for like someone was paying us, hey, do this once a week together. Like that's it would come across almost the exact same way. Yes. And I think that element of authenticity to it is something there's a vacuum of that on the internet in a world where everyone is desperate for the attention so they're embellishing they're sensationalizing they're creating these personalities for themselves in an effort to to get a small piece of that attention pie but kind of losing who they are really in the process and i don't you know that is just kind of the nature of the business some people have to do that i'm just very grateful for you know what we've been able to do on the second channel and it's by no means like the biggest thing on the planet but it, and for me after all these years of doing it it's easy to get lost in numbers and getting caught up in that but i always remind myself i'm like man there's like there's a football stadium's worth of people that show up multiple times a week to to watch us sit down and talk shit in a camera like what a fucking blessing what a cool thing that is i lose sight of that all the time and to not take that for granted yeah it's fucking crazy it's the power of the internet and it's we're so used to it now, but it's, I always want to, always want to make sure to remember that. So anytime you're feeling nervous, just remember you're in front of a football stadium full of people. I'm basically Taylor Swift. Well, listen, you're in luck right now because, you know, this is, this Storyfire podcast, this, this podcast is exclusive to Storyfire to start. There'll obviously be highlights and clips we'll be syndicating elsewhere. Mm. But like, this is, I'm kind of pumped because this is like a, a fresh start. Like it's only the real true OGs 
they're going to be coming and watching us to start before I can hopefully grow the show throughout the course of the next several years. So we can kind of, we can say whatever we want. We can take off layers of clothes. Like, oh, that's a, that's for a different <laughs> website, honey. Oh, wow. wait, did I? Yeah, I forgot we can't edit this shit. <laughs> I mean, we can. If we had to, we would. But the goal is to not have to edit it at all. Um, I do, it, for, for those of you watching, not listening, just got this guy in today. We're calling him Ice Cream Man. My little piece of pop art. I don't know. I saw him online, had to have it. And I justified it by being like, you know what? My wife's a bit of an ice cream addict, so she can say what she wants, but he's holding ice cream, so you can't get too mad. <laughs> what do you think about him? I love ice cream, and I, it's just going to make me crave ice cream even more. <laughs> well, <laughs> just bring me over here to stare at the ice cream, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, I don't, you're kind of like at the apex of how you could, how much you can crave ice cream anyway, so this isn't going to make it any worse. <laughs> kind of harking back again to 2019, like if someone okay. were to watch our content today, someone was new to, to Mr. Lush, Mrs. Lush, Christine, and now that I... It's, oh. I'm so funny. I'm so used to calling you Mrs. Lush on camera, but it's like... You can call me Mrs. Lush. It is what it is. If someone were to watch our content for the first time and they were like, oh, these guys are kind of cool. I don't know why they'd think that. But then they decided to dig into our older videos. They would see a pretty you know, radical transformation between then and now, not only physically, but in the way your presence behind the camera has matured, which we may have touched on a little bit already. But you know, I'm curious what that process is has been like for you a little bit of a general question yes are you Low. talking about the physical appearance well, it, or it, it, like the it's a, it's a little bit of both. confidence behind the camera a little bit of both and i think they i think they kind of go hand in I hand i think they can go hand in hand exactly yep um you know i think just time i mean we've been doing this for so long mm -hmm. so when you do something repetitively over and over and over again i feel like naturally you're bound to get more comfortable and confident and 100%. that's what's happened to me repetitions yes this when anything you do will make you more comfortable at it no matter what it is for sure yep and then you know in terms of the physical stuff of course i've lost a lot of weight yes i look i just overall i think i look a lot different because of that um even though i've gotten older i'd like to consider it a glow up <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um and that that helps i was always very insecure about my weight off and on the camera so i just i feel physically and mentally so much better than I ever have. So I think that that just translates to how I come across in our videos. Yeah. You know, it was right around the time you were pregnant with Jackson and then we gave birth to Jackson in 2018. We gave when, birth to Jackson or when, I gave birth to Jackson? Listen, I was there at the head of the table holding, holding your hand. I am on the hook for as much pain and suffering as you are. Zip it. <laughs> I was eight centimeters dilated. That was my anus. It was just from the nerves. <laughs> it was turtle heading the whole time. You at least had whatever that numbing bullshit is. Yeah, how many pints of blood did you receive after? Oh my the god, baby came dude! Out? It looked like a scene from Resident Evil after that. Oh that yeah, that was. She had her, she had a bit of a traumatic birth and lost a lot of blood and turned into an iron deficiency. And they released us from the hospital a little too early. And then, if I could just, I'm just going to summarize a story. Maybe some of you have heard it, but the first day we got home from the hospital. They were like debating whether to give you an iron infusion, right? Or a blood, blood transfusion blood, yeah. before you left. And they, they asked you. They kind of left it up to me, which feels really not you negligent. Should leave it up to the patient. I was not in any state. I'm a nurse and I was in no state of mind to make a decision like that. Right. All I could think about was getting home. That's all you wanted. And of course you were like, no, I'm good. So right? I was like, all right, send me home. So we get, and then that night. We oh get God. home and the and then the anemia kicked in and we First day home from the hospital, first child, and she, like, can't even get out of bed because she's so weak. And I'm like, oh, shit. And, like, when you have a kid and you're in a hospital, like, it's a beautiful thing, obviously. But anytime there's a need that that child has, there's a nurse on call right there to help you get through it. You get home, you're on your own, motherfucker. Like, yeah, so so you being in bed, I kind of had to man up for that first night and mm -hmm. the next day, do the diaper changes. I was physically incapable. Yeah, yeah, do, help with the feedings and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it was a learning experience. And you ended up having to go back a few days later to get an iron infusion because it was it was taking you so long to recover. You still, you barely could walk for a day I could not walk from the couch to the back bathroom without being short of breath and dizzy yeah so never mind like yeah, carrying yeah. a baby around because i was gonna drop it yeah so it was not an exp it was not a good experience even yes. though everything turned out okay it, it was you, you it got, was rough you got the infusion and then after uh, over the course of the next day or two you really started to improve once day? That I, I mean it took a couple weeks but okay. i'm sorry yeah but it was it started to improve which was the the good part because it was just days of you yes. not improving at all yes anyways all that was to say you know, you had just had a kid. That's a that's a traumatic experience 
and you know it's an amazing experience but traumatic obviously for for a woman and you know i'm i'm running around with a camera and then not but however many months later obviously it's post pregnancy we're dealing with the kid put on a little weight through the pregnancy which is not unusual and I'm like, hey, why don't you hop on camera with me and uh, we'll start chatting shit to the internet. And like, Wait, we have to – don't forget the fact that I also had to go back to work at this time too. Oh, my too, God, so. that's right. Yeah, you, yeah. All right. I was not in the best shape before I had the baby. Yeah. I wasn't huge, but I was not in good shape at all. Had the baby, put on 20 pounds during pregnancy, which truly isn't a lot during for a pregnancy. And considering Jackson was nine pounds of them. 20 pounds, yeah. no, 20 was, pounds isn't a whole lot. Yeah. It was really after him that I would say I blew up weight-wise. Like, I really did this lovely slow climb until I got to a point where I was so uncomfortable. Right. And that that's also not uncommon because obviously yeah. you have a child. Your lifestyle is going to change. Totally. All of, you know, the energy you had to take care of yourself previous to that child is now being spent on taking care of a child. Right. And going back to work um after maternity leave yeah. when i felt like crap most of my maternity leave i just felt so ill prepared to go back to work mm -hmm. and take on this i was in a big role at the time as you remember yeah i had a high stress job as a nurse manager and was taking on more responsibility as i came back from maternity leave yeah. and it just it all felt awful and then a couple months later, you were like, hey, let's start recording, <laughs> let's start recording videos together. So I'm like, you, I don't know what planet I'm on, so why not? You were a trooper. And I, I maybe, in hindsight, maybe I never gave you enough credit at the time, but want to commend you for, for being willing to do it. You know, at the time I told, like, I told you if, like, I'm not going to obviously, I'm never going to force you to do anything. Like, if you, you, like, if you really didn't want to, I would be like, no problem, we'll move on, which whatever. But, but you were willing to do it. And I, I'm so appreciative of that because I feel like... Over the years, we it's it's in a weird way. It's as much as it is sometimes, like work, and it's like oh, I don't, I'm not in the mood to do this today. It is cool to weekly over the course of many years just have this time when you sit down and you know try to laugh at things together. I th I think it can't be overstated how not cool that is because we can make content out of it. But I think it's helped our relationship in a in a weird way. Um. And I'm appreciative of that. So, so back to the to the nursing. You were a nurse, so we'll we'll mm -hmm, get into that mm -hmm, a little bit mm -hmm. more. You're now having to see yourself on camera for the first time, really in a regular interval that's outside of like a, a vlog I was doing every couple months. But like, what was the moment that really like what inspired? I know a lot of people probably would ask that watch us. Like, what what was it? What was that moment? Because you know, so many for people what? that moment where it was like, okay, this is it. I'm going to make a change, and then and then you health wise. Uh, yeah, I would say in this case, in this case, health wise, because so many people I think have these wants and these desires, and they have kind of an understanding of the framework that it might take to get there. And this can be with anything. In this case, we're talking about health, but this relates to a lot of areas in life. But for a lot of people, there's like a eureka moment where it's just, all right, I'm, not, I'm ready. Like, you know, it's like you, you might not be ready for a long time. It could be a lifestyle change. It could be a, an environmental change that happens. And then, you know, you're able to to start changing the way you live your life a little bit and, and maintaining it for, for X amount of time. Uh, what was that like for you, you know, when? Um, so a lot of the desire did come from seeing myself in YouTube videos okay. on our channel. Uh, I didn't watch all of them or watch through every video or even full videos, and I still don't often. I might click on them once in a while because uh, I'm like, all right, I was there for it. Well, yeah, yeah. After you've been doing it, <laughs> after you've been doing it a long enough time, too, it's like yeah. you don't need to see yourself in every video the every single day. Yeah, you get comfortable. You're like, you know, I was there for it. I know I'm happy with the way the team edits, and I'll occasionally see something and be like, oh. I forgot about that part, but yeah, mm. mostly it's, you just, you're fine with it. So yeah, I had seen, I, we had talked about this previously on a YouTube video, but sure. I had seen our Christmas 20, it was 2021, 20, 2020, uh, 20, 2020 video, 2020 Christmas. And filmed by I Josh was the Snake. just yep. beyond disgusted with how I look. I was just baffled that that was how well, it was just Large a slow, it, it, it was a slow creep, I think, is 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 kind of what happens. And the the interesting part about putting up videos every single week is it's like having to look in the mirror every time mm -hmm. you see that video. And you you know, and, and the other piece of it is you'll randomly catch a video or see a clip from a video from like a year and a half ago. 
and you're like, oh, wow, I didn't even notice that, but it, I guess I've kind of been moving in this direction. So it, it kind of makes you look in the mirror a little bit more than you For might sure. have to if you're not doing this particular thing where you're filming yourself or being on camera. And then YouTube aside, I knew I didn't feel great physically. Outside of the way it looked, it was just how you felt. Yeah. just not feeling good in my clothes, like needing to go up in sizing and clothes and yeah. not wanting to go in that direction. And I knew, like you said, it was a slow climb. And I knew that if I keep kept doing what I was doing, then what's going to happen? I'm going to keep gaining, gaining, gaining weight. Sure. And that was the last thing I wanted to happen. So in terms of making a change, it, I started in like January 2021 without really much of a plan or premeditation. I just literally woke up one day and was like, I'm not going to keep doing the same thing I've been doing. So that was it. Foot I, down. Seriously. I just said, I'm, I'm done. I'm going to make some changes and see what happens. Yep. Um, I probably, I either heard of Noom or Googled something and that came up and I'm like, oh, well, what can it hurt? Let me try this program. Yeah. So I signed up for Noom. That was a catalyst for you. Yep. For sure. Um, for those listening or watching Noom, it's basically just an app that helps you track calories and they deliver they a calorie deficit. Yeah. They, they deliver literature as well. That's trying to reframe the way you think about food. I've done sponsorships with them in the past on the main channel. This obviously, we're just telling you our experience. We're not, we don't have any sponsors on this podcast yet. No. Yet. Well, you know, one can help, but uh, yeah, just to give you that background. Um, and, you know, not not to go down the whole rabbit hole of how it went, but that. Right, because it, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's many years. I feel like we could do a whole episode yes. or 10 on weight loss, physical fitness, yes. all that. Mm -hmm. So tried the diet thing for several months before I also introduced exercising. Yeah. Um, probably three months after I started dieting and um, fell in love. Not immediately. It felt hard as fuck. Horrible. To, yeah, there you go. To start nice. working out. Tell it how it is, baby. <laughs> I yeah, mean, you, when you, you keep go talking from... On, it's it's 12.15. I'm just going to pour myself another bullet. Oh, God. Here we go. <laughs> I'll lie real quick. I'm sorry. Go to ahead. go from zero level of physical fitness to then... No, 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 oh, no. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> to then... <laughs> <laughs> just me then? Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my bad. <laughs> to then start trying to work out it, it felt so hard. I mean, it, it started I started anything, with cardio. Yeah, anything new is always going to be hard, especially physically. And then lifting, stuff. and you just—I just felt like such a weak piece of shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were, I you was. were, you were thirty some years old. You had never spent more than nineteen seconds in a. Well, you had never lifted weights ever. I don't think you had. Your only experience in a gym was maybe trying to get on a stairmaster, like begrudgingly, off and on. This is what I think you've told yeah. me in the past. Yeah, so, but so you had to start from zero. I had to start from zero, and, and that's I, so the I part. literally don't know what kept me coming back in the beginning. Because when it feels that hard, I don't and either. Yeah, honestly, I'm, the there's no immediate satisfaction. Delayed bro. gratification. I mean, you don't see, you don't work out one day and then see yourself in the mirror like, oh yeah, I look toned and fit. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it nope. takes a long time, so I truly don't know what that kept me coming back. I'd say probably partially the enjoyment of. Using our Peloton. Mm -hmm. It is fun. They have a lot of fun classes. And I guess probably just the idea of like trying a little bit of everything. You know, I was trying spinning, yoga, bar, yeah. lifting. Uh, ultimately fell in love with it and haven't looked back since. I do want to parlay this because the timing I think is interesting. And I want to parlay this into the next question I had around nursing. Ah. Because... Christmas 2020, that was right around the exact same time that you became a stay-at-home mom, which I believe was at the end of January 21, about a month That's later. That's exactly right. Yeah. So talk to, me about the, talk to me about the timing of that. Not only like, you know, as someone who spent their adult career in the nursing industry or in the healthcare industry as a nurse, a good one at that. You know, I knew you for a lot of years um, while you were a nurse and you were... You cared about your job. You cared about your patients. You were unbelievably responsible. You were smart, knowledgeable, and you did really well. You you kind of worked your way up. You were in management positions. You were do, managing multiple sites because your, you know, your employers and your colleagues saw your value and they wanted you in those positions. It turns out managing people sucks and is difficult <laughs> and it pays well but can be terrible. We won't go down that road, but. Um, but talk to me about like having your identity being a nurse, because mm -hmm. obviously for anybody, your adult occupation becomes part of your identity. Mm -hmm. 
inevitably. And then going from that and, you know, us kind of coming to the conclusion together in 21, um, which, you know, Grant, this was nine months into the, uh, you know, the COVID Mm. thing. So you were in the hospitals at that time and that Mm. was a whole nother level of stress from working from home to going to different sites, that disaster. So first, I guess the first leg of the question is, what was it like leaving that industry in hindsight? You know, did you feel like a part of you died? Do you miss it? Are you, are you happy about how it went? And like, what is that? What did that look like for you at the time? And how do you feel about it now versus maybe how you felt about it when you first left and became a stay-at-home mom? I was, it was nine months into the pandemic and I was pretty well burnt out as you could imagine. Yep. I was very, very ready to leave. I, you know, I remember saying to you, just, just say the word. And I will put in my notice. Yep. There weren't any other reason that I had to leave work. It it wasn't like we had a child care issue or anything like that. It was strictly just me wanting to be done and have a break. Uh, I do remember that I had asked my employer if I could cut down to like very part time, something like 24 hours, and they would never let me. And so for me, that was a real catalyst to be like, well, then I'm I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. You can either have me for 24 hours or part time, whatever, or I'm out. Yeah. Uh, so as soon as you gave me your blessing, I was elated to put in my notice and okay. leave and take a break. But I saw yeah. it at the time. You always kept the door open. You were always I, like, of course. oh, we'll work per diem or, yeah, which, exactly. is, which is fine and a good way to go about it. Exactly. Because like you said, it was part of my identity. So thinking about leaving completely with no return didn't sound realistic at the time. Right. I thought that at some point I would go back. I remember thinking, well, maybe I'll take a couple years off and then. Maybe when Jackson goes to kindergarten, I'll go back. Yeah. I had that like timeline in my head that I'll probably go back part time when Jackson starts kindergarten. Sure. Well, we are now eight months into kindergarten, and Christina has not gone back to nursing, and I have zero intention of yeah. going back unless I have to right. for financial reasons. And I, yeah, hundred percent. And and that's the thing, you know, we always knew you you have the skill set. If we ever needed or yes. wanted, in your case, to go back, like you would you'd be able to in a heartbeat. You have the relationships, they have the they have the need for it in the industry right now. You still get text messages from former bosses and colleagues <laughs> like, what can we do to get you back in this office? All the time. Uh, uh, I've teased the idea of maybe working for DM or part-time, you know, not too recently, but to you over the last couple of years. And yeah. you're always like, nope, if you want more work to do, I'll give you another episode of Lush Life to That's do every saying. week. I, like, yep. He's like, wait a minute, don't yeah. do it. <laughs> So my mindset around the whole thing has kind of been informed with just the way my life has transpired the last you know decade, which is going from someone myself who was working in restaurants. I was in a band and just always working paycheck to paycheck and my whole life looking through everything as an exchange of time for money. That's mm-hmm. most people that are on W-2s. That's, that's, that's what it is. You give your time to somebody, they pay you money for that time and for your value you're providing to that company. And that's, that's a perfectly fine way to live. But once I was able to have a little bit bit of success online with, you know, the main channel and just what I've done in the past several years and being able to work with sponsors, you, it's so, you start to view everything differently. Now you look at, Mm. you know, you, you once you've built a brand in a sense, you now have that leverage where it's not about I mean, it is still in, in in essence like okay, I'm 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 spending my time to do work for somebody and they're paying me, but you have so much more leverage and it's like you can negotiate and it's like it just it opens up a world of opportunities that I just never really thought about before I was able to start doing it my own. So now, when you're talking about okay, you know, I could just go back like once or twice a week or do this, and I'm like, but if I could use you for that same amount of time and we could come up with some cool things to do together, what? Whether it's more Lush Life videos or maybe we could do something fitness related like that Start makes that makes so much more <laughs> sense because there's no ceiling to that. Right. I know. The floor is lower like it could do zero, but there's no ceiling. And that was that's my new view on life now is like even when you're working in industries where you're trading time for money, you're working W-2s. If you're unhappy even a little bit in what you're doing, at least have some sort of hobby or you know, the word side hustle is a little bit overused, but something that 
may have a small chance of scaling and turning into something where you can start to leverage your expertise or something you're good at uh, to turn that into revenue somehow so you can alleviate some of that pressure to trade your time for money in that sense. So, so that's now, yeah, all these years later, it's like, I love that, you know, we have that as a, as a fallback. If we need mm -hmm. to, Lord only knows what could happen any given day, anything could happen. My channel could get deleted, whatever. We'd be fine. We have the skill set to, to get by and that's yeah. a beautiful thing. But in the meantime, I'm just like, yeah, let's just keep, let's keep exploring this avenue, what we can do together, you know, online in a way that hopefully is fun and brings value to people watching before we throw you back into the nursing thing real quick, you know. So I've been very trusting in you with yeah. that over the years, and right. I have no intention of going back unless it's necessary. <laughs> right. right. And, uh, yeah, and, oh, man, just the, the way that things were, too, when you left, too, with the COVID. I'm sure things are a lot different now, but it's... Oh, yeah. My understanding is that as many industries are right now, healthcare is just always looking for people. Hard to find good people, hard to find staff that stick around or mm -hmm. are reliable. I mean, that's that's not just healthcare. I think it's every industry, but. Yeah. So the second part of that question, now that we got a feel for, you know, how that felt, how did that timing coincide with, you know, I think sometimes people's biggest, I don't want to say complaint, but one of their biggest reasons for not being able to do something or not being able to take the plunge, change their habits or whatever is not having enough time or mm -hmm. whatever it is. And I know most people, especially nowadays, a lot of couples, a lot of families, both parents are working. That's mm -hmm. very normal. It's n not easy. It's very difficult to support a family on a single income. Like maybe it was a little more normal in the seventies or the eighties. I would imagine that was a catalyst in your ability to maybe spend some more time focusing yeah. on yourself, which it was kind of like, what's my excuse now? Right. Which at that time was, was your, you know, was your own, was your own health. And would you say that that really it was a catalyst that was helpful in your ability to make the transformation you did, or at least get into the, to the place where it became something regular? Oh, for sure. Having yeah. more time on my hands and, Having the release of that stress as well, yeah, 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 gives you more opportunity to focus on yeah. what you really want. If, for instance, you were to go back to work, say we just <laughs> we stopped uploading to Lush Life, Crap. and it was like, all right, you go back for four four shifts a week, like you were doing. You were doing four tens, maybe something like that. I think you would find a way to still prioritize working out in your own personal health, absolutely, because you've realized how important that is in your own personal mental health and your the way you feel and the way you go about your day. That was how it was when I was younger. Once I felt that, you know, I, I've always closely related how well I'm taking care of myself physically first and how that translate into my own well-being and how I'm feeling and it trickles into the other areas of my life. I've always had that very close connection. It always starts with kind of taking care of the temple, the body, the physical piece. And I got that young just through being someone who was a very heavy child, very out of shape, uh, dealing with that in middle school, losing a bunch of weight, going into high school, working out, powerlifting competitively, playing sports at a, you know competitively in high school, and that became part of my identity. So even as I went through my phases of life, you know, I'd go through the phases where I was very busy or overwhelmed with whatever it was, and sure I would maybe lose sight of that a little bit, but it was always like, it always stayed there. Like yeah, it never, it might like, look different. And it, all, and it always, well, it might've looked different, but it, like it, it, I would only let so much time go by where I was like, okay, I have to pump the brakes because I need to start reprioritizing things because I've let my personal health slide and it's affecting every other aspect of my life. So now I have, I'm just going to start moving things around to make sure I can reprioritize mm -hmm. that. And I think that's kind of what you came into in your thirties. Like sure. now, so yeah. like, and if, so I have thought about that. Like if yeah. I did go to work or have a nine to five, whatever, I would still make it work no matter what it takes. That's right. And the reality is no matter how much stress you're under or how busy you are, you can always make something work. It just depends on how much of a priority it is in mm -hmm. your life. Yeah. And it's, Number one. <laughs> it's number one for you from never having touched a weight to literally like I, I, every day I wake up and she's like, oh, I look at this new like oh, we're like driving somewhere in the car and I'll hear something. I'll be like, are you watching a Peloton video again? Like in the front seat of my car, like you watch them enough in the workout room. Like you're just watching. <laughs> oh, like on Instagram or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, because you follow like all the Peloton instructors and stuff. Sure do. Oh, my God. We're basically best friends. Yeah. Yeah. She got like when I talk about 
niches or industry that people follow? Like, you know, I obviously have people that, you know, I follow YouTube related stuff. You're like, you're full blown, just fitness Peloton follows your whole feed. Shamelessly. That and relatable mother memes. I want to open it up now because I leveraged our YouTube channel to to lobby our audience on okay. Lush Life for a couple of questions, a little Q&A, see if uh, they had anything specifically they'd like to hear from you. I think some of the, a lot of the questions, some of them kind of repeated around the same themes. Obviously, a lot of people are curious about what we just talked about around the transformation and that journey, what that looked like. So I'll try to... I'll try to kind of pick and choose so we're not just rehashing the same things. But uh, first question from Join the Fist, uh, and I'm curious as well. Good question. Oh what did you first think of Leon's YouTubing <laughs> when we met in 2013? So interestingly, t before you answer the question, we I wasn't doing it when we first met. I mean, right. I was in a band. I was... I had already uploaded videos on YouTube in a music-oriented fashion in like 07, 08, 09... But I was like fully not doing anything online, in a band, full degenerate, working in a restaurant, drinking five nights a week, hair down to my shoulders, <laughs> living the van life. Uh, that's when we met and you started dating me. God bless you. And in hindsight, this is how I knew she's a real, like if you were willing to date me at that time in my life, I was like, I don't know if it was the half a sleeve tattoo I had at the time or <laughs> the beautiful luscious locks, but oh my gosh. that's how I do. But yeah, what I would say... Once I left the band in, you know, 2015, and I remember I remember actually specifically sitting with you in a coffee shop. It was a Starbucks. I forget where it was. And telling you, I'm at this place in my life. I, you know, I, I love the band, but I just don't see it being a viable thing for me to continue into the future. You know, we're getting a little more serious. Like, we care about each other. I'm rounding the corner on 30. I think I should take my time and reinvest it back into how I can get some attention on the internet at the time it was still music centered. I wanted to continue mm -hmm. doing music, but do it online. And then, you know, over the course of the next few years, what did that look like for you, for you? Like a spec let's, let's fast forward to like once I was uploading maybe some commentary stuff and yeah. What, well, what were you no, thinking? it didn't start with commentary stuff. It no, started no, no. with music and then some very oh, like interesting motivation? stuff. Oh, no, no, no. Even before. Oh, I'm God. sorry. Oh, if I did fun. not mention Lispy Glass, <clears throat> Lispy glasses. Lispy glasses. I would be a fool. True OGs know. That is one of the standout first pieces. That was in the in basement. My mind. The basement in Waltham. That All right, little so studio I had done. To me, there. what did I first think of it when you first started this? To me, it were a hobby. Of course, that's what anyone would think. And it was. Be and it, it was. was. It, it was. was. I think yeah. that's fair. Mm -hmm. It's. Yeah. You didn't immediately know, okay, I'm going to make a career out of this. No, I nobody mean, you knows might have that. Had you know, you have, desires, yeah, yeah. you have aspirations to like see what can happen. But so I thought of it as a hobby and something, a hobby that I absolutely could not relate to in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> right. But not something that bothered me. Of course, I was going to let you do your thing. Yeah. We even had a second bedroom in our apartment where you kept all your computer and music stuff. Yeah. Even so, well, like, that was when we first moved in together. You, we moved into a two bedroom apartment intentionally, intentionally because you already knew that I needed a dedicated room mm -hmm. to produce music at the time mm -hmm. and whatever it was. And that, that actual room was where, you know, in that same year I would transition into more commentary style stuff and that informs mostly what I do now, but yeah. So I never, I, I certainly didn't understand it then. I'm not even going to pretend to understand it now, but <laughs> I'm proud I'm of where it's gotten you. Either. <laughs> I'm proud of where it's gotten you. Yeah. I mean, it's morphed just like the whole Lush Life thing and us. It, it's morphed so much throughout the years. It's it been so yeah. long at this point. It changes. Things change. Some of the elements stay the same. But, you know, part of one of the reasons I'm so, you know, kind of giddy about just doing this right now is this feels like a great detachment for me from being overly concerned about algorithms and views. It's like... Man, I just want to be able to have a place where I can sit and have conversations either with people in person, bring on guests remotely, and just talk authentically, which is an area of what I do that has been lacking. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't have that kind of content that I produce myself. And I'm, you know, I'm 38, you know, I'm rounding the corner, I'm 40. Like, I'm going to continue to do what I do, but I want to also start to introduce a more mature style of content. You know what I mean? That isn't necessarily 
peddling to short attention spans and quick edits and stuff like that. And, you know, the main channel, that, that's come a long way even on the main channel now where it's the editing is a lot less heavy handed and hopefully more story driven. And I do think from where I started on YouTube in 2015, my audience was very heavy, eight, you know, 18 to 25. And I mm. think that's just kind of grown with me yeah, and yeah. skewed upwards. And I would say is mostly 25 to 35 now up into my age group, which is, I think, the natural progression. You know, I don't, it would be... If I was still acting the same way and saying the same things I was, you know, still doing bits with Nigel like I was in 2016, God bless him. He's, he's sitting here on set with us. And don't get me wrong. I'll be forever grateful to Nigel and he'll always be part of <laughs> he'll always be part of my life, my history, my online legacy. But but yeah, you, you your content in a way it needs to it needs to kind of grow up with you and you're going to lose people when you do that along the way. But. You know, God willing, you find a new audience that is wanting to mature with you or, or finding you for the first time. And and you're in a place where you're doing something that feels that feels authentic. And, and that's why I'm so excited about doing this and excited for what the next few years are going to bring, because I'm going to have this new element of being able to to really just be mask off and be myself and talk about talk about life and, and what it looks like for me and hopefully explore maybe some deeper issues too, depending on who I have on. And I'm just, I'm happy to have you on because you're the deepest issue I have in my life. Wow. <laughs> uh, wow. I mean, you so, sound like a problem. Excuse me. So along those same lines, we have from, from Shiny Ranger asked, what's your favorite YouTube on Leon's main channel? Have you even watched one of my main channel videos ever? Uh, yes, ever. <laughs> but let me tell you, it's been a long time. I bet it is. So I don't know. Just say the Badlands Chugs video because that's, that's probably the coolest one. Yeah, that video is that was the best. I mean, shout out Josh the Snake. Some of the stuff we did together was fun and awesome. And then Mr. Beast stole him from me, and I was left desolate and lonely. Just kidding. <laughs> that's funny that that's what someone wants to know. <laughs> Just kidding. Love you, Josh. Yeah, no, that was a question they asked. Um, here's another one. Same vein. What's the favorite? What's what's your favorite video that we filmed together? Oh dear. Yeah. I mean, we haven't done one in a long time, but I like some of the IRL stuff. No, I know. So even even though I've already mentioned that I don't like vlog style, which I do not, that's different. Some of the IRL stuff that we've done with like, like the, the blind taste water testing, tasting, yeah, the blind generic food even, brand oh, taste testing. Yeah, we're even so filming the the intros that we did, the video where we did all those intros. That was hilarious. That was yes. so fun to do. Yeah, that was awesome. It was as fun as it looked. And and I and so along that note, a lot of that was enabled or possible because we had Josh living locally yeah. and he was able to do the camera work for us. So that is a piece that I miss too. And mm -hmm. I think we are definitely due for that style of video that gets us out into the world a little bit. Mm. Um, or even just on, on this set here, like bringing in some stuff, we can try some things or do something. Obviously we're going to continue to, to do reactions and, and laugh at stuff like that. But yeah, there, when you do enough of those, it's like, it is fun when you're doing something a little bit different. I remember the, the food that to me, it was the water video or the probably the, the, the food, the generic versus name brand food testing. That was, was probably so my favorite too. one. Yeah. And that, that was like 2019, 2020, I want to say mm. 2019. So yeah, that makes sense. So, you know, as, as things continue to grow, hopefully I do foresee a, a, a place in the future, hopefully where we can have some, uh, you know, I could have maybe a local guy that could help do some work for mm -hmm. us and we could we could start doing some more stuff. So, yeah, stuff it's a like favorite just because, because those just stand out to me because they're different from the normal sit yeah. down in front of the computer. So, yeah. yeah. Well, this is going back quick, briefly to the nursing, but there were a lot of questions actually about your nursing because a lot of people that watch us, we've mentioned it over the years that people know, and I think it's a popular industry. So there's, I'm sure, plenty of people that watch us that are in healthcare in some capacity. And John White wanted to know what, are your worst and best experiences as a nurse? He says his mother used to mention crazy stories as a staff nurse. Oh, dear. Okay, that's putting me on the spot. <laughs> Did you ever get, like, shit on or puked oh, on? What do, you, or... what do you think? Yes. yes? Oh, is that, is, <laughs> I don't know. I don't fucking know. I don't. I hate hospitals. Uh, <laughs> Fuck with that. Rectal tube malfunctions. <clears throat> oh! What is that? For patients in the ICU who are intubated and sedated, and so they have a tube up there. Yep, obviously. and it drains. Right, in a matter. malfunction, like it popped out, and then see you later. Mm. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's how you get pooped on. Yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, people dying. Yeah, that I young think, people dying. I think that's probably just like yeah, that's part of the job that, you that don't sucks. Forget. Yeah, of course. Especially, and then you know, of course, some of the best experiences are when you. 
help save somebody. Maybe. Yeah, when you yeah. help save somebody or you make a one small one small decision that ends up changing the outcome for a patient for the better. Yes. And sometimes it's just that little piece of critical thinking that, or even instinct sometimes, and you just know, or you speak up on something that needs to be said and it changes the outcome for the patient. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like you used to tell me stories like that because you were, you were never afraid to voice your opinion if you felt like it would have an impact. Mm. And I don't, you know, I wasn't there with you, so I don't know in what capacity, but you you were always impressive to me with how knowledgeable you were around the subject of your work, you know, just, I think, which is funny, you know, you came out of high school, you went to school for something unrelated, and you were like, I hate this, but you, I think at the time, you just knew you, you had this propensity for human anatomy and physiology, like you loved the human body. Or something, and I'm sure there was an element that was like, hey, this is nursing school, like, you can get a decent paying job after this, so that that could be something good to do. But there was always part of you that felt excited about what you were talking about, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you you know, as much as nursing was a job and it was hard sometimes, and it's like you drag your feet because you're going to work, there was always, from me, from my perspective in the years I knew you when you were nursing, that was always overshadowed by how much it seemed like you genuinely were interested in the subject matter and, and just whatever it was through, through medications or just different treatments and how to help people that were struggling and stuff like that. So that was always fun to see because I, I certainly don't have the same propensity for caring about that stuff. Yes. And <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I came home with some fun stories. Yeah. Yeah. There were some, some, some crazy things stories. do happen and I still have oh, what about a that? desire and an interest in that. Like I, of course, yeah. If I were to go back to work, I'm not going to pick a different career at this point. I would go back to nursing. Yeah, I do that... love it and have a passion for it. Yeah. It's just more out of necessity now. Yeah. Whether I worked or not. And what would you say? Um <laughs> You can't whisper things under your breath anymore, hon, like on the on the only on, on Lush Life, because those things are just gonna be in the podcast. Crap. <laughs> I'll knock it off. She just said something and then just whispered it. Made that made no sense. Is that what you said? <laughs> Doesn't have to. Doesn't have to. We're just here free flowing. I'm on my second glass of whiskey at noon. Oh my time. god, calm down. It's also not noon anymore, by the way. All right, it's like closer to one. We're good. This is an interesting one. Do all the comments on your looks ever feel creepy to you like they do to me? He says. There's a thin line between the compliment and just plain too much, and she or you is more than just a pretty face. That I will agree with James. She would have she would have to be more than a pretty face to put up with Leon. Amen. <laughs> But yeah, I'll let you go. But like, obviously, anytime you're doing things on the internet, our culture now is so, 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 so hypersexualized mm. that no matter what you do, what you wear, what you look like, if you're making content and putting on Instagram or YouTube, there's going to just be a percentage of comments that are just like, ooh, yeah, yummy, yummy, like all this shit. Like, I'll let you answer first. Like, does that bother you? I kind of expect it. I mean, like you said, it, it's everywhere now. So it no, it doesn't bother me. First of all, I don't read comments all that often. Hallelu- I do. I, hallelujah. Keep I do that, sometimes. Keep that habit alive. Yeah. Um, and I do notice it, and you'll tell me you'll be like, "Gosh, every comment in this video is Mrs. Lush, Mrs. Lush, Mrs. Lush." <laughs> <laughs> really had to let go of my ego on that second channel, hon. I know it's. I know they're not there for me. I know. Um. So no, I mean, I. I guess it it it's a compliment in some ways. I sure. Can't deny that. Do I let it like fuel my ego? No. Yeah. And I, I will say like for, for us specifically, you know, a, a lot of the ones I see are, they're like thirsty, but they're still somewhat respectful. And it's like, and a lot of it's like, I mean, no, no disrespect to Mr. Lush, but blank, 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 no disrespect, blank, blank, blank. Right. It's That's fine. most of what I've yeah, seen. Yeah. And a lot of them are like nice compliments. And then you get the ones that are like, ooh, look, you're like, you know, like the 13 year old, like, oh, fucking milkers. Yeah. Look at that. Like. There's always going to be those. I, to me, if from my perspective as the husband or whatever, you know, I've been in this game quite a long time. So like I knew what to expect. Who cares? It's like it's a random 14 year old or 50 year old. God only knows commenting, you know, from their mom's basement somewhere around the world. Like, what are you going to do? Who really cares? There is an element that it is that is complimentary. But like as a dude, it would be silly to get upset over it or care. I find it kind of humorous sometimes i kind of play into it occasionally think it's kind of funny oh you do like you comment back is that what you uh, mean once in a while yeah 
Because l- listen, there's... listen, I'd be making those same comments if I was on the other end looking at you on. Like, oh yeah, yeah, you're you're a creep. No, 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 I don't mean creepy ones. I just mean like. Yeah, but but I, I do find it. Yeah, inter- you, you want to elaborate on that? You're going to comment on someone else's wife? <laughs> not, no, I actually wouldn't. I, that was not the right the right thing to say. What I was trying to convey from saying that is, I think you're hot and I love you and you're Thank and you. you're and you're Thank wonderful. You. Um, yeah, so most of it's complimentary. I mean, maybe there are some creepier, over the top, obnoxious <laughs> comments out there. I know that sometimes, depending on what I wear, there are lots of comments on my boobs. Well, I mean, I know, and like I, we're sitting at a desk, and it's waist up, so that's yeah, what you, you can see. Yeah, so the, it's, you're literally just <laughs> boobs and a face. There's no other part, which is crazy. And I'm like, and well, I feel I bad, to- and I feel bad for everyone else because I'm such an ass man, and you got that thing on you. You know what I'm saying? And they don't get they don't get that. They only get the top half of the equation. So God bless. You guys at, least, are missing out. at least I get the other half to myself, minus that Instagram video we posted for the whole. <laughs> so it's not we can't pretend like we didn't occasionally utilize it to our advantage. Like there's a reason why I use you and the thumbnails and not me. Because <laughs> you're it. much more easier on the eyes than I am. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> but it is the way the internet is. Like to to synopsize the whole thing, like we, you know, our culture now is so hypersexualized from the plethora and addiction to pornography, all these things. It's like there is a, a kind of a sad element to this idea that, you know, when you are online and you are a woman, you are basically just a piece of meat to a large portion of the internet. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that, and that's just the unfortunate kind of nature of the way things are. And I don't know, it is what it is. So what what are you going to do? Get mad about it? You know, if, if things got really disrespectful, I would, I would, maybe intervene in some way, but sure. we've been fortunate. I do. There was another question. I don't know where it is, but along these same lines, just about uh, like living a life online. What's that like? And I, I will say we're in a fortunate place right now where, you know, we've been able to, to do this as a living. I feel very fortunate with what we've been able to accomplish, but we're blessed. Our audience that watches us on Lush Life is is really great. They've been awesome to us. And we kind of live in this microcosm of people that are familiar with us. Of course, we get introduced to new people on YouTube and stuff like that. And we occasionally get the, the nasty comment. But there is inevitably a level of success online, which we're not at, that you get to where you all of a sudden get exposed to the whole, you know, just whatever it is. You're on Reddit. You're on Twitter. Mm. And it 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 uh, opens this floodgate of just vile. No matter who you are, you just if you, you eventually get to a certain level of success where uh, success where we're we're not at yet, and like it's a double edged sword because it's like you want to scale and you want to grow the brand, you want to get more views, make more all these things. But there are a lot of negatives that come with that because there are there is a level where it just no matter what, there will be a, a large percentage of people that are only showing up to tear you down and shit on you and say the nastiest things possible. And I've always felt fortunate, like even on my main channel and what I do myself, like I've dealt with that a little bit more through different areas where I've peaked and kind of like trickled into the more mainstream stuff. But for the most part, we kind of live in our own little ecosystem with people that show up to watch us because they they like us as, as individuals. And it's awesome. So part of me is like, man, I just kind of want to stay where we're at. I love it. I would yeah. be very happy to stay right where we're at. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So no, to me, our life feels very normal. It does feel funny to call it work to right. put content out there. Um, but I am always caught off guard, like in the off chance that someone does come up or say something to us like, oh, I watch your YouTube. I'm always like so caught off guard. Like, like I said earlier, I just like kind of forget that people watch me online yeah that happened to us at disney a couple weeks ago yeah several yeah. times yeah yeah we were in line for the millennium falcon ride mm-hmm. and the person that was like the, the the young woman who shout out if you find your way to this yeah. uh to this podcast that was kind of like the last person before you load onto the ride and separating people she's like oh my god and we were we were very flattered and she's like if you want we, i can get you your own spaceship and I was, like, I was like, no, man. I was like, please, don't worry about it. Put us in there. Not to mention it's the ride that like it's three and three. It's six people and everyone has a job to be like the pilot or the gunner or the mechanic. So I was like, ah, no, I'm cool, like, no, but, we don't. We can share. <laughs> yeah. But it's cool. Like we're at like this a really what I consider the perfect level of you can still have a great personal life. Life feels very normal. And then. You know, occasionally you see people out in the public that recognize you and it's very flattering. And I actually recently, just this week, was watching a clip of Mr. Beast talk on a podcast where 
he talks about the experience of going from 1 million subscribers to 10 million subscribers to then 100 million subscribers. And he was like, there was a kind of a, an inflection point in his popularity <clears throat> where it was cool and it very quickly became miserable. Uh -huh. I And I'm happy because I don't think what I do, I don't ever expect to be at a point where I'm doing those type of numbers and I don't want to. Like I look at somebody like Mr. Beast and I'm, I'm envious of his work ethic, his inability to create cool things and all these things, but I have no desire or envy for his lifestyle at all. I'm older. I'm a family man. I want to be, I want to be able to walk across the driveway, go out to dinner with my family, enjoy, enjoy myself. And we're kind of in that perfect, that perfect medium right now. So while I'm always trying to kind of scale and grow and try new things because stagnation is just the worst and it's boring and it's unchallenging. Uh, there's always that part of my brain lurking where it's like, man, I just, if I do, will I eventually get to that point where life just becomes miserable and it's much harder to have a personal life? I don't know. I guess you face those challenges as they come. Yeah. But that was all kind of stemmed from that question about comments get, you're getting online. And the overarching thesis is our comments are still mostly cool, even when they're thirsty, they're respectful. So agree. That's what it is. From what I see. <laughs> Percy asks, did you ever see yourself or yourselves, us two, in this kind of position? And were you planning out the future? Or excuse me, when you were planning out the future? And what advice would you give to a couple in my generation, assuming younger generation? So I would say to preemptively stage this one for you. When I was first starting out, I doubt that you envisioned you being a part of it. Correct. So no, I never... in a billion years would have predicted this or envisioned this or planned it. Right. It's it literally just morphed. I back in 2019 or sure. whenever you asked me to start doing Lush Life videos. Yep. If you had said, and four years, four or five years from now, we're going to be recording three videos a week and starting a podcast and doing all this <laughs> stuff. I would have told you you were nuts. Yeah. I think you yeah. can't predict. You just, you can't know. Yeah. I mean, you can work hard and strive for it, but We've been kind of flying by the seat of our pants well, a little bit. Well, that's exactly right. And when we started, I was never like, oh, I'm going to get my wife involved and we're going to do content together. Like that was never the vision. Mm. I always had visions for myself. But even when I started, I had no idea I was going to be a talking head. I was like, I wanted to be the musician. Like in my 20s, I wanted to be the next John Mayer, like sensitive singer songwriter. And it's looking back, it's so laughable, kind of <laughs> just because it's so incongruent with my personality to be like this bleeding heart, you know, acoustic guitar singer songwriter. But I don't know. I just had certain influences and certain, you know, certain things that, that shaped that. But I've always been open to reinvention and really trying to figure out as you go, what, what are your strengths? And the music part of my life, I think I am ta a talented musician in a lot of ways, as far as the theory and being able to play instruments and, having a reasonable voice, or at least I used to. And that piece was a huge part of the beginning of the growth of Leon Lush because I was still doing music. I was doing diss tracks. I was taking the music aspect of my life and crossbreeding it with kind of the new commentary community type stuff. And that helped me stand out. Mm -hmm. So it's like, as you're going through life, it's figuring out what your strengths are. And if maybe you're in this vertical that, isn't working, how can you take those strengths and maybe apply them to something else? And that's what my whole life has been, just like tr figuring out, figuring it out along the way. And that's kind of been how we've done it together, I think, where it, it, we never had, we never had a grand vision. I, For me, I will say this, like the only vision I ever had early was like, how can I generate some sort of revenue online doing something that I enjoy in alleviate some of the stress of having to work in the restaurant however many hours a week to pay my bills. Yes. That was the only goal I ever had. And then ever since then, it's just turned into what it is now. So that love from Africa, that's from Percy. Thank you. So we got people from all over the world Holy watching, moly. asking, commenting. We love it. I like this one. Steadfast5 wants to know, what's your deal with rats? No. <laughs> Anyone who watches the videos knows. Oh, uh, do you really... Do you really want me to answer this? No, I there, guess is I have no to. there, there uh, is no you deal. Don't have to you you for just me. have a borderline phobia. Like you never had a bad experience. It was never like a. <laughs> oh, did you? 
Oh, well, do, is there something I, I don't mean, know about your experience with rats? I mean, mice, rats, gross. So I have, well, yeah, I have a fear of... Having a couple mice in your walls oh isn't, my God. Isn't, oh my God. isn't grounds for phobia. So I'm just saying, like, you never were, like, strapped down to a conveyor belt with, like, mice running all over you. No, no, no. <laughs> Nothing ever happened. I just have a fear of rodents, I guess. Mm-hmm. I think it's they just, just disgust me, and then when we found that they were in the house, not rats, mice. We had some mice problems in the house. So. <sighs> yeah, it just exacerbated, tortured my soul for yeah. a very long time. Yeah. And it's we'll the re- yeah, there, I won't up. get into this, but it's the reason why the gym's in the office here now, and my gate. Like we, I've gone to the ends of the earth to try to make it more comfortable for you, and we're in a good place right now. The weather's warming up, so uh-huh. we'll see how things mm-hmm. go. But to answer your question, uh, I don't know what my deal five, is. Th- there is no deal. I think she was just born with an aversion to rodents, and I don't think that's uncommon. I'm sure there's, you know, you've, certain, me, you've certainly made me feel like a weirdo. No, well, I like to do that just for fun. But you know, like for me, you know me, I, I don't care. I don't. Th- those things don't bother me. But I know that it's not uncommon to be afraid of rodents. I think yes. there's a lot of people in your situation. It's different than being afraid of something very peculiar. Rodents are one that is probably not uncommon to be afraid so of. So that would come up in a, in a Lush Life video because if we watch videos and there's a rodent warning, a mouse or a rat, I yeah. cover my eyes and we'll the watch. Te- That's the, the context for this. The context for that question is the team knows, like when they put some content together – and they're getting a list of clips. They'll they'll say like Mrs. Lush warning because they know there's a they. And they I will cover my know. eyes because it I, for some reason it's so. She can't stupid. even watch the video on the internet. It does trigger me. <laughs> so I need a trigger warning for rodents. I used to like joke about it with you and like try to push your buttons, and I nope. it, I learned quickly that it was just not worth the, yeah the blowback. It's yeah it's just too traumatic for you apparently, and that's fine. Everyone's got their thing. Eve three PO wants to know. Leon looks like he snores. Ever had to give him a good smack before returning to sleep? Oh, he's been kicked in the shins many a times. There was a period of time where I couldn't get a good night's sleep because I was just getting wake. I was just getting woken up to you slapping me in the face or kicking me nonstop. Yep. That might have been what informed or incentivized me to start taping my mouth. Mm. Granted, this was when I was a little bit heavier too, so yes. that obviously exacerbates snoring typically. But not always. There's a lot of people that are of average weight that snore. And, you know, it's not to say I don't still, but typically when I tape my mouth, I have a a better percent chance of not snoring. I would say we would agree with that. Entirely. Okay. Which I love. Yeah. I love it. It's a win-win. It's a win-win. And and this is- You do snore through it once in a while, just so you know. And I'm always baffled when it happens. Like, how the heck? I am a mouth breather. When I sleep every- And I know a lot of you guys watching this are, or listening. The second I fall asleep, my mouth gapes open. And it creates Mm -hmm. this thing that causes you to snore. And when you tape your mouth shut, and it helps you to- it, It helps you train your tongue to kind of mew, which is- Or rest against the roof of your mouth. It doesn't obstruct your airway in the same way. And it will- Breathing through your nose will uh, eliminate or reduce the chance of you starting to snore, if depending on the type of snorer that you are. And it has really helped me. In addition to that, I've talked about this before, but there's a lot of research to suggest that nose breathing while you sleep is very beneficial for you from a, a rested standpoint. It helps you get into REM sleep better. It's moisturizing the air as it's entering your lungs. It keeps you better oxygenated. There's a lot of research. It's kind of, it's a silly thing, right? But when you're looking at silly things you can do to help optimize your life, getting good, actual deep sleep is probably one of the best things you can do to solve a myriad of problems. I mean, you sleep better. I sleep better. (laughs) It's wonderful. For a little piece of mouth tape. It's all it takes. Took me a while to get used to it, but it doesn't bother me at all anymore. Just throw that bitch on there and drift off to sleep. Can't do it when you have a cold, clearly. No, 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 no. <laughs> but most of the other time, it it goes quite well. How does she deal with hearing you yell from the recording room constantly? We talked about this yesterday. Uh, yes. So I used to hear him yell a lot more constantly. Because? Th- because the video games were right. over here. It's pretty much video games that make you yell yeah. and freak out. Well, well, relax, but yes, oh, oh, but d- yes, you're d- right. You don't want the world to know? Well, what what they know mostly is when I'm in my videos I do on the main channel where I get animated, most of that is late at night, so nobody would hear me anyways. But there was a period of time, I no longer have this, but in the office we're in right now where this set is, the room right next to us used to be like where I had my gaming computer. 
And so I have a little bit of a addiction to gaming. So sometimes during the day when I should have been working, I would log in and play some League of Legends or something. And I would, I occasionally would have a rage fit. And if like her and Jackson were playing outside, like she would hear me and like, that would say, there was another question that was, there was another question I wasn't going to ask, but it was like, oh, what are, what are Leon's icks? And I would say that is probably one of your biggest icks for me is hearing me freak out at video games. It makes your skin crawl, right? Entirely. It's it, like the it, biggest turn off of all time. The, thank you. you. Well, you literally <laughs> took the words out of my mouth. It is the biggest turn off to hear a grown man screaming and having a tantrum over a video game. What is that and why? Why? It's just so bizarre to me because in reality, I mean, and maybe people don't know this about you, but you're a very cool, calm, and collected and patient person. Yes. You don't yell. You don't yell at me. You don't yell at Jackson. You don't freak out. You don't get heated very often at That's right. all. That's right. So the fact that it's video games that trigger you to do that is just very bizarre to me. Uh, honestly, and I, I felt somewhat vindicated we're reach we're we're watching currently the the new show called Dynasty on Apple TV, which is about the Patriots and their dynasty. And we're four episodes in. And in episode two, it's there's obviously a lot of Tom Brady. There was his old roommate. I forget who it was, but he was ta- like he was talking about when him and Tom used to play video games together. Tom would get physically animated in bullshit over like a Sega Genesis football, like visibly upset and pissed. And when you look at Tom in real life and how he carries himself, like he's very calm and collected, level-headed. Obviously, when he's on the field playing football, he gets animated and heated. But I I was like, you know what? I'm so glad to hear that because I feel like I'm the same way. When it matters in things in life that matter, like in your relationship, in dealing with people, when you're in public, when you're under a lot of stress, I, I consider myself, I, I'm, I'm good at keeping my calm. And, yeah. and figuring out how to traverse my way through difficult situations. When it doesn't matter, when there's genuinely nothing at stake except your pride over playing a video game, that's when I, for some reason, my body knows to release all that pent-up anger that's inside of me. And I'm not proud of it, but there's like a weird element to it. I, I'm not trying to justify it. It's still childish, obviously, but I've been like that since I was a kid. There's stories from the kids I grew up with, my friends that I play games with to this day when we were like 10 years old playing N64 on my couch and I would lose and I would like wind up and just Ugh. Charlie horse him in the thigh and get bullshit. So it's always been inside of me. But for some reason, in the areas of my life where it truly matters to keep your poison, your calm, I've, I've been able to do that. But yeah, I, I've, it is embarrassing because I do know, like it, it is a big egg for you if you hear me freak out about your game. So Entirely. I've, I've tried to get better. And now since we've moved the gaming office or the gaming room out of this office. It's in the house. It's in the house In now. the basement. And so I still occasionally freak out, but it's two floors away and you're already in bed and you can't hear me. So it's good. You haven't I've heard, heard me. No, I've heard you. Have Not you really? a lot, Only but I have. You, okay. Usually if I'm, uh, no, if I'm still awake. Okay. It, it's not like waking me up out of a dead sleep. I sleep with the giant fan on. Fair enough. Yeah. We, oh yeah. Fan sleepers unite, baby. <laughs> For life. Up top, air five. Psh. How do you sleep without a fan? Don't know. Never tried it. Don't care to. <laughs> Fucking pleb. Imagine sleeping in silence. Nothing's, what is no, that? Nothing like, sounds I can't worse. actually handle that. Oh, yeah, let me just have to fall asleep with the, the deafening silence of my own thoughts and the little pin drops of house noises going on around me. Fade me with that bullshit. Put on a loud ass steel fan that's blurring out everything in existence at that time and I will drift off into sweet sleep. If I slept without a fan on, I would think every little noise is a mouse probably. Well, you're, well that's, that's so that's the P. You're such a light sleeper as it is. That that fan really helps because yeah. you like little things wake you up. I'm a or deep sleeper, extremely light sleeper. Yeah, uh, for me, I'm a deep sleeper. And then with the addition of the white noise of the fan, I'll sleep through an earthquake. Doesn't yep. matter. Yeah, doesn't matter. I'm just. Let's just say if the house gets broken into, I'm the one saving us. Well, you would just need to wake me up, and then I can pop into the safe it and, get my, gu- and hard, get my gun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'd have to probably like punch you a couple times. Yeah, you would. You would. But all you need to say is intruder, and then I got the Glock. <laughs> Intruder, you'd think it's our kid. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, so wrapping this up here with one or two more, uh, you know, this is actually a good one because this is, I think, one of the reasons people tune in and watch us banter on Lush Life. But uh, Eponia wanted to know, is having a sense of humor and being able to goof around about things an important aspect of your life in relationships? Of course. Of course. I think so. And I think it's it, it can be specific to your relationship. And personality, mm-hmm. like compatibility, relationships, 
are so unique in every, in every instance, there might be couples that just don't really have much of a personality. And so they get along on a wavelength that there is no sarcasm and there isn't, and that might be fine. But I think in general, it is so healthy to be able to shit on each other in a playful, funny manner. Like, and it's all contextual. Like the words, you know, go fuck yourself, idiot. Like we, we could say that to each other in the right context and it's hilarious, mm -hmm. but I would never ever say that to you in a situation where we were trying to communicate seriously. Right. Right. So it's contextual. And yes, I, I do love, I mean, it, it comes with the territory. I've always been a sarcastic asshole my whole life. I've just predicated on sarcasm it informs a lot of what I do. And I think that can be great. One of the things I, I love about you and I think that drew me to you early on in our relationship was you're kind of the same way. You're not oh, afraid. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No. You're I absolutely, love sarcasm and a good fart joke. Yeah, and a good fart joke. That's right. The sarcasm and you and some of the shit you've, that you say, I'm just like, damn, coming out of her mouth. Wow. Like you'd never say it with cameras rolling. <laughs> But I'm glad. But I'm glad I get to see it. I mean, maybe if you give me a little more of that bourbon, <laughs> yeah. I might. Next time we record, it's going to be at night in two drink minimum for you. <laughs> um, but yeah, to answer that question, I no doubt. And you I, know what? I think that that actually um, comes into the way we parent too. I, don't you feel like oh Jackson's the same way? Of course, He's a sarcastic of, little of course it rascal. Does. Kids are a sponge, man. They're going to absorb. That's He's why, funny. like, you know, parenting's a tough job. And you can read the books and you can and you can deliver the speeches and say the things, but there is a huge element of parenting, which is literally just your child absorbing the way you behave yes. when he's around you. Yes. The unintentional parenting stuff. He is absorbing who you are. He's absorbing how I treat my wife. Mm -hmm. He's absorbing how she treats me, how we behave together. And that's one of the things I'm most proud of because I think we have such a wonderful dynamic at home that is so carefree and lighthearted and fun. Like, obviously we have moments and there's arguments and there's times we have to get serious with him and set boundaries, but you can see it in his behavior that he just has a level of playfulness that I think he's gotten just from how we kind of handle ourselves. Yeah. And that's something I'm proud of. And I, you know, whatever, I don't know what there is. Thank, thank my parents, thank whatever it is. Um, I'm just happy to keep that going because as a kid, growing up in an environment where he can feel comfortable being himself, he can express himself. Like, there's all these things. I just, I, my heart breaks, you know, in all these videos I watch online and all the terrible things I see online with just negligent parents that are raising these kids in homes full of abuse and despair. And it is just, it's so unfair because it's stunting the ability for these kids to develop emotionally and turn into adults that will be high functioning members of society. What do you do? That's a whole nother rabbit hole to go down mm. is just like, you know, the nuclear family, how important that is in these children being raised in families where there's no direction, there's no guidance, there's all this stuff. Um, yeah. So that's a tangent based on the question. Yes. <laughs> I do think that having a sense of humor is important. Yes. If you have one, obviously that's going to be personality driven, but we've even, definitely passed it down to our kid. Yeah. Yeah. Even if that's not who you are, maybe you're more type A and just more whatever. I don't know. I think there's still a way to inject a little bit of sarcasm and, and levity into, into parenting. And I think it needs to be that way as well. Not draconian. Boundaries with levity. Yeah. Yeah. Last one. And I like this one. <sighs> Texas Goat Tradio <laughs> says, if you oh. would, he's talking to me. He said, please let Mrs. Lush know that some of us, some of us are very grateful that she let you use her credit card years ago. Without that, we couldn't enjoy y'all's videos. So just a simple thank you. Wow. I thought wow. that was amazing. Wow. True OG asking that question because I've said the story in the main channel. I'm, excuse me. I've said this story on Lush Life before, but that was, you know, hearkening back to that 2015 area when I was leaving the band. Didn't have two nickels to rub together. You let me borrow your credit card to buy an iMac. Yep. Because I, I, I don't know why. In hindsight, I don't know. You must have been absolutely insane to do that. I but, was in love. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were in love with the the degenerate band guy with the long hair and the tattoos. I mean, obviously, I trusted that you were going to pay it, and I had you know. Yeah, you good knew I was credit. an honest dude. Excuse me, you knew I was an honest guy. I wasn't a drug addict. I was yeah, exactly. I wasn't shady. Exactly. I had good intentions, and you knew that. And and here we are, all these years later. And look where it got me. Best investment it ever made. <laughs> best investment you ever made. 
So yeah, uh, that was the iMac. I learned how to edit and produce, and that was the beginning of anything online related I ever did. And it it was possible because you fronted me whatever it was, the fifteen hundred dollars on your credit card that I paid back in a couple months. Whatever. I don't it was. remember, but I don't you paid either. it. That's all that I really did. mattered. Yeah. I wasn't making uh, any money online welcome. yet. No, you're was... welcome to you and to Texas Goat. Uh, Texas Goat Radio. Texas Goat Radio. You're yeah. welcome. And Leon, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's been a treat, honey, to just get to explore, kind of reminisce, memory lane a little bit, and explore some of your viewpoints on how things have gone the last few years. You know, we could spend hours going down the rabbit hole, not even just YouTube related, but I know a lot of people that watch some of the stuff we make are just interested in our dynamic in a marriage mm -hmm. relationship, some things that are maybe a little heavier. And I know that we certainly don't have all the answers. I'm not opposed to trying to talk about it in more length, maybe in the future. Um, but I feel like today was a really good starting point, just getting a little insight from your perspective. I know it was interesting for me to hear you talk about how things felt for you kind of early on and how they've transpired over the years. Some of the things I knew already, but it's always, always good to get that fresh perspective. Uh, and yeah, I want to thank you guys so much for listening. This was the first episode of, of Decently Indecent, which is going to be uploaded in full on Storyfire and then distributed elsewhere. And, um, I'm very excited to see what we can do the next couple of years in growing this show and having some conversations. I mean, it's a little bit, it's, it's partly selfish desires for me because <laughs> I just love having conversations, you know, so it's just so different than creating a, a crafted video for YouTube in, in the VOD sense where you're just trying to deliver the most amount of value in the shortest amount of time, being able to unwind, have a couple drinks at <laughs> 1 p.m. on a Friday and chat with your wife, man. I, I couldn't be more blessed and I'm appreciative. Um, Thanks for having me. I'm lucky to be your first guest. Yeah, yeah, you are. And I'm sure uh, I'm sure you'll be back. I know when we started this thing, I'd, I didn't want to put the burden on you of having to be a co-host from week week to week, but... I have a feeling I'll be a regular. Yeah, I know there's going to be people that are going to be like, oh, God, it's another episode without Mrs. Lush. <laughs> uh, boo. So I'll make sure that she comes back on. She fortunately doesn't live that far away. And by <laughs> that, I mean 20 feet across the driveway to her house. So thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Peace. Say bye. Oh, bye. <laughs> <laughs>